basically what we did was we um, did a number of studies, four studies, um, where we wanted to figure out how sexually attractive people found different emotion expressions. Um, and, and all the studies were a little bit different, but the general thing that was the same across all the studies is that people would see a photo of someone of the opposite sex showing either shame, happiness, pride, or a neutral expression. Um, in some cases they saw many photos, in some cases they just saw one. And for each photo they'd be asked to rate how sexually attractive they found the person on a scale of one to nine. And what we found across all the studies is that there were these really um, pretty major gender differences in what people found to be attractive. Um, so what we predicted and found was that pride was really attractive when shown by men, but actually the least attractive expression when shown by women. Um, whereas happy was exactly the opposite. Happy, when shown by women, was extremely attractive. It was the most attractive by far expression that women could show. Um, but men who showed happiness were actually considered pretty unattractive. And then shame kind of fell in between and was actually considered pretty attractive um, for both genders to show. And the classic example that we keep giving people is James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause, um, or with the, with the Vampire <laughs> in Twilight. Um, and both those guys look like they're brooding, but really what they're doing, if you look at their nonverbal display, is they're showing the shame expression. They have their head tilted down, slump posture, chest kind of turned inward, eye gaze averted or turned downward. Um, and, that, and that's classic kind of shame expression. And obviously women find that very attractive. Happy guys were significantly less attractive than the proud guys in this one. Um, happy females were significantly more attractive than proud and other emotions. In the second study, it was an online survey, so basically we had our uh, RAs who are blind to hypothesis collect uh, just as many photos as they could of all these different emotions. So we told them to go out to collect happy pictures, proud pictures, shameful pictures, neutral pictures. And then we kind of compiled them all together in these three different samples. Um, and so we showed a battery of photos. Uh, each, each participant would see all these photos of the different targets and different emotion expressions. And then be asked, um, how sexually attractive do you find this person from one to nine scale? Again, one being very unattractive, nine being very attractive. They would see this guy showing shame here, rate him however they, they felt, uh, however attractive he was, click their rating, and then click next, and then they would see the next guy. And this is a, it was in a randomized order, so they'd see shame, pride, happiness, neutrality, in just a random order. They would give their next rating, and then see the next photo, another shame, uh, and so forth, until they had completed all the ratings of the photos. And we had uh, two separate samples of photos. So in the first one, they saw 20 of each emotion. And then it, we replicated these results in a completely different sample of photos um, using the same methodology to gather them uh, with uh, another additional 10 in each emotion expression. We are talking about attraction and emotions. It occurred to us that you know emotions are shown all the time in pretty much every social situation that there is. Um, therefore, they must af affect how attractive you are. And yet, there's really literally almost no research that's actually systematically explored this question. The reasons that pride, male pride might be attractive, it's, it kinda, it's like a high status emotion, so if a female sees a male showing high status, or if anyone sees anyone showing uh, pride, uh, they're going to see them as more high status than someone showing a, a separate emotion. Um, and so this is kind of one of the reasons fueling this uh, female attraction to, to pride. They're a high status, perhaps they're a good leader, a uh, good provider maybe, and this could be driving these uh, attractiveness ratings. Um, whereas happiness, I mean, it's not as, it's not as clear cut. Um, it does lower uh, dominance ratings and masculinity. So it could be that these, these males are appearing more feminine when they're showing happiness. Um, could be an uh, indicator of sexual receptivity. So uh, it's been found that women actually rate guys who have had more sexual partners as lower in prestige uh, than men who haven't as many sexual partners. Whereas men would find a happy, sexually receptive, youthful woman as highly attractive. In my lab, we're really interested in understanding what emotions are, why we have them, um, what their sort of evolved function is, how they affect our social lives, how they affect our behaviors, and how they're manifested behaviorally, physiologically, uh, mentally, cognitively, and so on. And so that's certainly the perspective we had in, in this research, is sort of let's examine three very specific emotions that we know have very different effects on kind of everything about people and see if they influence, um, you know, this really important dynamic in, in social life. Women that I've talked to really like these findings. I haven't gotten any kind of negative anything from women. They're sort of like, yeah, that's great, that makes sense. Um, whereas guys are, you know, find it really like, what, you know? 
Every every guy is like, oh, that's why I haven't gotten any girls. <laughs> too <laughs> the, nice a guy, too smiling. Yeah, there's a lot of people kind of on the fence about it. I, I think people either really strongly agree with it or really strongly disagree with it. And I think that's kind of why the research has kind of had the buzz that it, that it has right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you'll, you'll find a lot of people that say, like, oh, yeah, like, uh, I tried this brooding thing and it really worked out for me. But then other ones will say, yeah, like, I don't know, I, I, I like to tell jokes and all that. And is that a bad thing? Should I stop telling jokes to people? And, I mean, we're not in a position to tell people to really do anything. We just did a series of studies. We found these kind of interesting results using these pictures. And uh, future research will be needed to tell whether you should stop smiling ever again. <laughs>